So I've been looking into upgrading my camera and doing a lot of research and talking to a lot of different people who have been using these cameras to try and find out what the pros and cons are for each camera, but also to decide which features I think are the most important to me. Because every shooter is different and there are all sorts of different features other than just the image quality, which will really make a big difference. Hello, my name is Simon Cade and this is DSLR Guide. So before I start this video I just want to say that I've written a pretty in-depth version of this video in text on my website dslrguide.tv so if you look in the description you'll find a link to my blog post which essentially has this video but in a much more in-depth way so all the things which I'm just summarizing in this video will be fully explained in that with lots of links to other test videos and stuff like that so I really recommend that you go check that out okay so let's get straight into it now the first camera that I'm considering is the Blackmagic production camera now this is a camera which is the thing that stands out about it is the image quality it has a nice lot of dynamic range it shoots 4k raw or some really nice ProRes and this is an image which is going to be free from aliasing free from more and because it has a global shutter it doesn't have any of that rolling shutter that you get on DSLRs and a lot of other cameras so the image on this thing is really really impressive for the price so that this means that you can get super high bitrate super high quality stuff at a high resolution which is something that you just don't see in cameras of this price range Blackmagic have done a really good job of making a camera which is very capable of of making a really beautiful image but it does have to be in good light this is not a low light camera but the main problem with this camera is that it has a few absolutely essential accessories which you have to use with this camera so the monitor for example is totally unusable in sunlight so you have to buy an EVF or some other kind of monitor the battery only lasts 20 minutes so you'll definitely need a really big battery something like a V-Lock Ant Anton Bauer battery in order to keep this camera rolling and the ergonomics of this camera are just so far from ideal that you'll definitely need a rig so at this point it's pretty heavy, it's got a lot of wires and things going around it's not ideal and it's, it's certainly not the sort of thing you want to be bringing on a wedding or an event or at least it's not the best thing so that for me is the biggest problem with this camera is that it doesn't just work out of the box, it needs a lot of things and that's the thing that everyone's saying about this camera is that it really can make a great image but it just takes a lot of trouble to get there if you're doing a short film or something else in controlled conditions then this camera will be fine but I think it will just really slow me down on my events on the weddings and things like that where you don't have full control of everything the workflow is just too slow when you're shooting and especially in post production the other thing with this camera is that the file sizes are pretty massive you're going to need a pretty decent computer in order to work with these files and definitely tons and tons of hard drives because storing this data and backing it up it's just going to add up really really quickly. Next up is the Panasonic GH4. Now this camera is getting a lot of interest at the moment due to its pretty impressive specs. So this camera can shoot 4K but for me the most important thing is that it can, using that 4K you can downscale it and make a seriously seriously good 1080p image. But considering that 1080p is still the industry standard it's really good that this camera can do a seriously nice 1080p image. The low light performance on this camera rivals with the 5D Mark III and while you'll still have some rolling shutter issues they seem to have pretty much eradicated moiré and aliasing since it takes the image straight from the sensor. So although this is cheaper than the Blackmagic camera you can still shoot some very very impressive progress and it's a lot lot better in low light which makes this a kind of better overall camera but it does have a micro four thirds sensor and a micro four thirds mount which for me is a pretty big con to this camera. Now, there are some great Panasonic lenses out there, but the problem is I've already invested in some pretty nice Canon glass, so I'm not in a massive rush to buy, go out and buy a whole other set of lenses. But there is an alternative, and I'm going to talk about this a lot more in the blog post, but essentially there's a company called Metabones, which is making a speed booster, which will allow you to mount your Canon glass onto a Panasonic or other Micro Four Thirds camera but the smart thing about this adapter is that it also will increase the sensor size essentially which means that the GH4 will become a Super 35 sensor 
which is awesome. And it will also give it an extra stop of light. So if this adapter does hit the market, then I'll be very interested to get my hands on a GH4 because I'll be able to use the same lenses with the same field of view as my current camera, the T3i. And that will make this camera even more impressive because I'm just not that confident about investing a lot of money into some really nice micro four thirds glass, which will not work on any larger sensors. So the nice thing about this camera is that it is pretty small. You can kit it out with a rig and give it an external battery to really get the most out of it, but you can still put it down to its smallest self-contained version. And that is something which is pretty valuable to be able to shoot like that if you need to. But do remember that at the moment, this is still very early days for this camera. It hasn't started shipping yet at the time of making this video. So I'm very happy to let other people buy it first and try it out. And then I can decide for myself whether this is something that I'm interested in. And finally, we have the C100. This is an extremely underrated camera. Now, although the specs don't look very impressive in terms of image quality, it has some really nice features such as the ND filters built in, which is a massive deal. I would love to have that feature on my DSLR. Then it also has a built-in top handle, which is really nice, with some really, really nice audio features, including XLR inputs, which is pretty cool. And then the batteries that come with it last a good few hours. Two of them are enough to last you a whole day, which is just really nice to save on the space of having a big external battery. And this camera is really, really impressive in low light. You can get some seriously good performances out of ISOs of well over 3200. So the nice thing about this camera is that these features enable it to be probably the best workflow out of these three. So it, for events and weddings and anything where you're not in controlled conditions, this camera is going to really shine because you don't have to worry about things like swapping ND filters and you can plug your audio straight into the camera. It's just going to work a lot more efficiently and a lot faster. So most people would say that the biggest flaw with this camera is the codec. And again, I'll talk about this a little bit more in the blog post, but essentially what they've done is they've taken a pretty nice 422 image and they've managed to squash it and compress it into a much, much smaller file size. So from what I've heard about it, although it is pretty low bitrate, it actually looks a lot better than it seems it would. So the nice thing about that is that you're still getting a pretty nice image out of something which isn't going to take up much space at all on your computer. And that means you can save a lot of money on hard drives. So while this camera is the most expensive out of the three, you save a lot of money in terms of accessories and hard drive space. So what am I going to do? I've pretty much decided that I'm just going to wait it out for a bit. I'm going to carry on investing in lighting equipment. I'm going to carry on investing in hard drives. And I'm just going to kind of start to save up for a future camera without buying anything yet. Because if there's one thing that using a T3i has taught me is that a well-lit shot will look pretty good no matter what the specs are of your camera to a certain level. So a C100 versus a GH4 versus a Blackmagic production camera, if you light it really well, there's not going to be that many people who will say, oh yeah, that one looks a lot better. So the better you light it, the less of a difference there's going to be between these things. So I think it would actually be quite a good exercise for me to stick with my 300 pound camera and just hold off until I see something which really does make a lot of sense because each of these cameras have quite significant flaws which just stops me from wanting to drop everything and start saving up for an expensive camera. I think there's a lot of value in learning how to make a camera which doesn't have tons of resolution, tons of dynamic range to play with. You can just learn to light your scenes to the limitations of your camera and then once you do have that extra space, then you're only going to be better. So I think it's a good exercise to do. And I think it's great to invest in lighting stuff. And I'll just kind of wait it out a little bit. If there's a adapter for the GH4, which allows me to use my Canon glass, then it seems like I probably will go for that pretty quickly. But if not, I'll either wait till the CM100 becomes cheaper, cheap enough for me to think it's reasonable, or by then there'll probably be a different camera out. So it's a pretty amazing time to be a filmmaker, but I'm still not quite happy with any of the cameras out there that justify that amount of money. So yeah, that's it for this week. 
I'd like to remind you to check out the blog post. It has a lot more information on this. I've been trying to keep this video as short as possible. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Mm.